John would love to have me uh, defeated. If, if I win, which I hope to win, how can you not when you see numbers like this, both on the virus and on the economy? Well, that's President Trump last night saying that the administration could move to slap snap back sanctions against Iran at the United Nations this coming week. You know, that's just days after the Security Council actually rejected a U.S. resolution to extend the 13-year-long arms embargo against the regime in Tehran. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calling that failure scandalous, saying, quote, Iranian terrorism and aggression threaten the peace of the region and the entire world. This comes after that major diplomatic victory this past week. The prime minister, the president, and the Emirati crown prince cemented an historic landmark agreement establishing full diplomatic relations with the first Arab Gulf nation in Israel, the United Arab Emirates. You know, other Gulf states could soon follow, and that would realign the Middle East to face the growing Iranian threat. With us for more on this now from Jerusalem. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, welcome. Uh, you must be uh, feeling pretty good. This is a pretty spectacular uh, surprise that you sprung on the world. Well, um, thanks to President Trump and uh, the Crown Prince uh, Mohammed bin Zayed, I think we're changing, we're making history and we're changing history. Peace is a good thing. And this peace unites uh, moderate, two of the most advanced economies in the world. Israel and the United Arab Emirates, and two of the most moderate were fighting uh, Iran and the radical uh, uh, radicals who are trying to overthrow the entire order in the Middle East, subjugate peoples, propagate terrorism. So this is good for peace, good for security, good for prosperity. Uh, I think it's good for the United States and good for Israel. First, it was uh, Egypt relations established back in 1979, then Jordan in 1994. Uh, the UAE, one of several Gulf countries, what other Gulf country do you think could follow? Uh, you, you've got Bahrain, uh, Oman, there's even Saudi Arabia. What do you foresee next? Well, you know, I think, I think the advantage of uh, pursuing the next step is pursuing it discreetly, just as we worked discreetly to achieve this breakthrough piece, this uh, historic rare breakthrough. So all I can tell you is that I did, uh, I, I have been uh, talking to Arab leaders, uh, sometimes in the open, as in my public visit uh, to Oman of the late uh, uh, Sultan uh, Qaboos, who invited my wife and me to a formal visit uh, to Oman, even though we didn't have uh, diplomatic relations. And I can tell you that that's not the only meeting that I've held in the, in the region. And I think, you know, I think the Arab countries are coming around to see that they can't be held hostage by the Palestinians. They have their own interest to develop peace with Israel, to exchange technology, uh, to exchange things like the corona vaccine uh, development, uh, uh, health, um, uh, infrastructure, uh, energy, uh, all the wonders of Israeli technology and entrepreneurship that you see both in the Gulf states and especially in the Emirates and in Israel. And if we join forces, we can do wonderful things, limitless things uh, for the benefit of our, our people, for their uh, well-being and for their security. You know, diplomatic relations, as you just pointed out, already they've announced that an Israeli research company and a UAE research company is working on COVID. Uh, but you also have the fact that, like the Jerusalem Post, you, that, that's been blocked. You can now read that in the UAE. Uh, and you have direct telephone service, and soon at some point there'll be direct flights. Uh, and you mentioned the Palestinians. For years it was seen that you have to have peace with the Palestinians first, then the rest of the Arab world will come around. You've kind of turned this on its head uh, in reverse, establishing peace with uh, Arab neighbors and then working on the Palestinian issue. Look, if you give the Palestinians a veto on peace between Israel and the Arab world, we're never going to have peace with the Arab world because they're, you know, they're refusing to have any kind of realistic settlement. And by the way, I think President Trump's peace plan is the only realistic proposal that has been put forward for many, many decades. So, but the Palestinians aren't coming around. So I think it's actually not that if we have a breakthrough with the Palestinians, we'll break open to the Arab world. I think it may be the other way around. We have a breakthrough with the Arab states, and the Palestinians will come around in a more uh, realistic way. So I think this is good for uh, peace all around. But I think that, uh, uh, you know, I think that it really does begin to change history. It's the third peace agreement that Israel has had with an Arab country, the first peace agreement between Israel and one of the Gulf states. And I think the first uh, peace agreement in which uh, I promulgate this new doctrine, 
Uh, some people call it the Netanyahu doctrine. It's called peace for peace and peace through strength. Now, you know peace through strength. Nobody wants to make peace with a weak country. Everybody wants to make peace with a strong country. And I think that under my leadership, Israel has become a very strong country, strong economically, strong technologically, strong in terms of security, and strong in the willingness to face up to a regime that bullies everyone and threatens everyone. I'm talking about Iran. This is peace of the strong and, I think, peace uh, of the hopeful for the future. We've, uh, I've interviewed you f starting back in 1984 when you were the United Nations ambassador here in New York, uh, and we talked about Iran and I I Islamic uh, terrorism at that time. And you wrote this book, and I'm holding it up right now. I don't know if you can see it. Terrorism, How the West Can Win. You wrote this book, uh, I, I think it was a couple of years into your tenure as the United Nations ambassador. And now you see what happened at the United Nations, where you used to work just this past week. Uh -huh. giving Iran basically a, a, not just a free pass, but they can have a flow of weapons coming in starting in October, Russia and China vetoing the U.S.-backed resolution. What does that say about what we have or have not learned all these years since we first started talking about this decades ago? Well, first of all, I, I smiled because, uh, you know, the U.S., uh, or rather the U.N., disappoints us once again. Well, that's not a surprise. Uh, we in Israel have been disappointed by the U.N. time and time again. But I think that this particular decision is absolutely scandalous. You know, Iran is purveying murder and terror throughout the Middle East, attacking everyone. It attacks Saudi Arabia. It attacks, uh, uh, it attacks uh, uh, Iraq. It attacks, uh, tries to attack us through Syria and Lebanon. It, it just, uh, it's in Africa. It's everywhere, sowing uh, mayhem. And what does the U.S., the U.N. do? It rejects a U.S. resolution that calls on the renewal of the arms embargo to Iran. Iran has done nothing to earn this uh, uh, benevolence from the U.N. It's done everything not to earn it, to uh, uh, basically to see uh, a continuation of the arms embargo is what is needed for uh, blocking aggression and furthering peace. And again, the U.N. has disappointed us. Not a surprise, a disappointment. But we in Israel will do whatever it de we need to do to defend ourselves against Iran's aggression, and I'm sure the U.N. will do this. The U.S. will do the same. I do think, ironically, and maybe it was the Iranian nuclear deal negotiated under the Obama administration, that uh, uh, in, in a certain way, and this is ironic, caused some of the Gulf nations to have a second look and, and actually, in a sense, got them to mistrust Iran even more and come to the table and meet you and start diplomatic relations? Well, what I can tell you, Eric, is that uh, I know many leaders in the Middle East were uh, took note of the fact that I was willing to stand up sometimes against the entire world, sometimes alone, against the dangerous nuclear deal with Iran. I think that uh, definitely um, had a contribution to achieving this historic breakthrough. Many countries now in the Middle East who used to view Israel as their uh, enemy now view Israel as their indispensable ally in protecting their future and their security. It is a uh, seemingly changing Middle East step by step with this victory. Uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, thank you for coming on the Fox News Channel. Always good to talk to you, and we will keep up with you. Uh, as I am sure another nation, another Gulf nation at some point will establish diplomatic relations, of course, we'll report on that. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you. And, and we deeply, we deeply, deeply appreciate the help of President Trump and the U.S. in advancing this uh, peace and further peace deals. It's been uh, indispensable and much appreciated. And it seems like there will be more.